The early voting, um, it started October 23rd. Um, it ends on October 31st. Um, and um, the early voting locations are open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and on Sunday, 10 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. And uh, we have a, a number of early voting locations in each county. Um, you can vote at any early vo voting location within your county. Um, so it's not like on election day where you have to go to your Pacific polling place. Uh, you can go to any early voting location within your county. And with that, uh, we've uh, been able to serve as a coordinator for the Souls to the Polls effort. We've, made it, we've been able to work with amazing, um, incredible core partners uh, across the state that have been so instrumental in making this happen. Uh, we have had representation of houses of worship in about eight counties. Um, uh, last week was the start of it. Uh, I was able to join Community Baptist Church of Inglewood. Um, and um, it's about 400 people in worship. We, we had over about 100 people go to the early voting location and following worship. Um, you know, this is the first time we're actually able to participate in the tradition in the Black church of having worship and going to vote uh, together. And so uh, we've been able to distribute uh, over 1,500 um, Souls of the Polls posters to our partners. Uh, and uh, it's been really incredible in Newark. Bethany Baptist Church um, uh, had a uh, Souls to the Polls worship uh, last week that was well attended and a lot of people participated. So we're, we're hearing so many great things uh, about it. And uh, what's so important about it is that, um, you know, specifically in the black community, um, there is research that shows that we trust voting in, in person more than voting by mail. And so having more options um, in, in additional days helps, right? Because, you know, election day, there could be certain barriers, people have to work, um, you know, childcare, there's so many different things, right? Transportation, there's so many different things that become barriers and having actually additional options. And then including, right, houses of worship where people can, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, have early voting locations that may be not too far from the church. And so we've actually had some of our partners that are, you know, taking their vans and, and buses and chartering buses and caravans and so um you know it's, it's really exciting you know because we understand that this is not only a one-time event but there are other ways that uh, people will, will be able to cast ballot but more so they'll be able to you know organize around different issues and in and, and you know push for changes in their community right you know you see this momentum that we see of people coming together um you know around voting which we're excited about but we also think about just the other ways um that you know people can continuously come together and, and organize and and push for changes uh, when it comes to you know economic justice. I know the first day it was uh, nearly twenty thousand people uh, voted on the first day of, of early voting, um, but I believe that that number as of yesterday it was uh, about ninety thousand. Um, so those numbers are probably increased. It probably is over a hundred thousand uh, so far that have um, participated in early voting. The Institute where uh, I work in the democracy and justice pillar, uh, we have done so much incredible work to expand access to the ballot from online to automatic voter registration to um, ending all prison-based gerrymandering uh, in New Jersey and also the restoration of voting rights for 83,000 people on probation and parole. So I'm really fortunate to be an organization that's doing uh, a lot of great work when it comes to voting rights, to economic justice, and also um, uh, changing uh, the criminal justice system. You look around the country, over 5 million people are not allowed to vote uh, due to some form of felony disenfranchisement. You know, voting is not just about voting on election day, but just having the ability to vote, having the ability to organize around your vote, having the ability to organize and, and push demands to elected officials and you know, your city council and your state legislator, because they impact these issues that we're talking about, right? When we talk about economic injustices, who are we asking to fix that, right? Who are we asking to fix the criminal justice system? Who's in charge of these systems, right? And um, historically, right, when we look at movements, um, many movements pushed <laughs> these systems to change. But when we look historically of the journey here, we're not where we need to be, right? We talked about liberation of all our people, but we have have come a long way. You can go to njisj.org slash vote, njisj.org slash vote. And uh, we have voter information flyers that tell you about the five ways to vote, the important deadlines. We also have a fre frequently asked question um, section that has mostly any question you may have about the election we have an answer to. 
Um, we also have our souls to the post early voting flyers and a list of um, churches that participate in the souls to the post, you know, this upcoming weekend. And so, uh, yeah, we have a lot of great resources there. Um, we just encourage you to download, share, um, you know, and, and, and reach out to us, you know, if anything that we can do, we, we always do webinars, we're always speaking and um, with community organizations, just trying to, you know, inform communities about their rights and, and help protect, um, you know, access to ballot here in New Jersey.